Hi, everyone. Thank you for joining us. My name is Stephanie Buck. I'm with the Open Library Foundation as the Assistant Secretary. Uh, thank you for joining us for our final session of today on the Library Data Platform, also known as LDP. Um, please note this is being recorded. Uh, use the question and answer box and we'll get to your questions at the end of the session. And if you're tweeting, uh, please use the hashtag WolfCon21. Um, presenting today is uh, Naseeb Nassar, who is Senior Product Manager and Software Engineer at Index Data. And Naseeb, it is all you now. Take it away. Thank you, Stephanie. Um, and thank you, everyone, for joining. And um, thank you, especially to the Open Library Foundation uh, for inviting me today. Uh, I work at Index Data on the Library Data Platform, or LDP project. Um, I've been developing open source software products for uh, 29 years, and um, it's a privilege for me to be here with you at this uh, OLF conference, which is all about open source. I'm going to talk about data in libraries and how the LDP project is working to support both the Folio and Reshare communities with an open, open source uh, analytics platform and how that platform is being used in a growing number of libraries. But first, I would like to go back in time about four decades to something that happened when computers first became widely available. When I was growing up, uh, I had the good fortune to work in a summer job in uh, university res research labs. And at that time, these were the tools of data management and data analysis, uh, lots of paper, calculators, an occasional slide rule, and very large computers, which were still uh, somewhat difficult to use. And then uh, personal computers became available. They were affordable and practical. So within a few years, a lot of data analysis moved to computers and software made data analysis efficient and flexible. This allowed more and more questions to be answered using data. Uh, over time, data analysis began to play a larger role in science. So data increasingly became central to scientific activity. And this change is still accelerating. The internet certainly accelerated it. And now the emergence of data science is bringing this change to many fields outside of libraries. So it is also coming to libraries and, and the ability of libraries to make good use of data uh, will be significant for the future of libraries. The point isn't only about asking questions and using data to answer them. Uh, it's really the ability to, to ask new questions tomorrow that we didn't think of today. Um, so to be prepared for tomorrow's questions, libraries need the proper technology assembled and working together. They need ownership of their data and they have to further develop and update their skills. Uh, specifically, libraries need the capability to manage their increasingly complex data, um, to, to integrate them with data from other sources, and to analyze all of the data quickly and accurately. I'd like to say more about ownership of the data and try to define uh, what I mean by that. I think the traditional model of a vendor holding data and providing services doesn't quite work for analytics or it's difficult to make it work well. Um, analytics is becoming more like science. It is, it's exploratory, um, its questions branch out and, and lead to new unforeseen questions. So the center of activity or focal point of that exploration makes a lot more sense being under the direct control of the, of the library. I don't want to say anything against vendors or companies providing services. I work for a company, Index Data, which offers uh, engineering and hosting services, 
Uh, EBSCO provides um, hosting for Folio. There are smaller companies in this community like Knowledge Integration, which does engineering. And all of these companies do very good work. Uh, but I think a good model for libraries and companies to work together on analytics is something more like an open platform. An open source community owned platform um, so that so that libraries can ensure they will have unrestricted access to their data. In this model, companies are still in a good position to offer analytics consulting services and additional data. So ownership here means at a minimum building your analytics on the foundation of a truly open source platform. It means having companies bring software and services to the library rather than the library's data being locked up within a proprietary platform. The LDP project is really a constellation of activities or sub projects that are all directed toward the goal of bringing an open source analytics platform to libraries and improving libraries' ability to manage, integrate, and analyze data. So the core software in the center uh, of this slide is called MetaDB. MetaDB is really the new name for an upcoming version of the software. Uh, the current version is called simply LDP, but I'm going to call it pre-MetaDB in this talk. Uh, this software basically provides the core features of the platform and everything else is generally building on top of it. On the left side is the uh, LDP Query Builder app. This, this is a relatively new app that runs inside Folio or Reshare uh, and provides a way of querying data in MetaDB from within Folio or Reshare. In the top right of this slide is LDP Mark, which is a plugin for MetaDB that transforms Mark data to a table that is much easier to query uh, than Mark or JSON format. So it's an example of a transformation plugin um, that uh, I'll say more about um, the general model of that in a moment. Um, the two gray color plugins do not yet exist. Uh, but they are planned as a way of customizing MetaDB with Folio or Reshare specific configuration settings and documentation. Turning to MetaDB, um, I'd like to go back for a moment to scientific data. Uh, I've spent a lot of time working with scientists in many different research domains, and there are some patterns in how data are managed. Um, it's slightly different from traditional business databases. Um, I think some of it is also relevant to library analytics, as I suggested earlier. There, so on the slide are three projects that um, I was involved in that, that, that um, had to do with capturing data and analyzing them. The first one at the top was a project run by the Coastal Studies Institute in North Carolina uh, studying wave power. We had sensors in the ocean generating geospatial time series data, and we needed to receive them, process them, transform them, and store the data for analysis. The second example was an NIH funded grant to do whole exome sequencing for medical research. We had uh, patient level sequence data and uh, genomic annotations generated in pipelines. And the third example is a general use case, but it could be Folio or Reshare Analytics. Um, you have a, a transaction processing database that stores the state of the library services, and you want to do analytic processing, and you need some way to capture and transform the data. The idea of MetaDB is that you have data sources and, and you want to store the data for analysis. The data stream continuously into MetaDB, which prepares the data in various ways 
and writes them to analytic databases. Once the data are in an analytic database, you can use any standard uh, database reporting or visualization tool to query them. The most basic function of MetaDB is to synchronize the analytic databases here on the right with the data sources on the left. It also transforms data, again, via plugins, for example, to support different database models. Uh, it automatically preserves and versions changes to data uh, and allows date range queries for looking at trends over time. And we plan to support uh, uh, provenance and other annotations, persistent identifiers and data curation or um, uh, data integration. So MediDB is designed around uh, stream processing so that it can synchronize data continuously. And what you end up with on the right side is a copy of the source data in the analytic database, but it's an enhanced form that is better suited to analytics. So with the history, with the transformations, with the original data, um, and then sort of uh, configured in, in the form that, that you want to use it in for, for, um, for writing queries. In the case of Folio and Reshare, you have a transaction processing database, which maintains the current state of the user facing system. The library services are microservices, and so their data are intentionally siloed because that's, um, that's sort of the, the uh, approach in microservices to, to scaling. So in the analytic database, in contrast, the data are aggregated or integrated so that you can do cross-domain queries. For transaction processing, you want very short running queries uh, that read or write a small number of records at a time. So you use a row store database, which is a traditional uh, relational database implementation. For analytics, you tend to use aggregate functions, which can read a lot of data. And so at some point, uh, libraries will want to use a column store. Um, MetaDB will support Redshift, which is a, a column store that is also uh, MPP or massively parallel processing. So you can scale up to a lot of data and that will become important in the not too distant future. The, the transaction processing database stores the current data, the current state of Folio or Reshare and throws away previous states. Um, there may be some exceptions to that, but in general, um, it's the, the, the design of the database is really for supporting transaction processing uh, and representing the current state, um, retrieving the current state very quickly and updating the, the current state very quickly. MetaDB, in contrast, doesn't overwrite data so that when a record is modified or deleted, the historical data are preserved and versioned, as I mentioned earlier. Uh, data are transformed to make them easier to query. For example, librarians don't want to query MARC records or JSON objects directly. So the idea is to transform the data into a relational database model that is much easier for non-engineers to query. The pre-MetaDB software has been deployed in libraries now for about two years. And that includes quite a number of uh, both large and small libraries. Uh, it is very stable and fully documented. We continue to support it actively, although most of the new engineering work is focused on MetaDB. Um, it is secure. Uh, but it does give you complete access to look at all of your data. And so obviously, if lots of people will be using it, you may want to restrict permissions for some of those users to certain data sets. This can be done via the database's user management system. Um, I, I also mentioned the Query Builder app we are developing that is tied into Folios and Reshare's user management systems. And so there's lots of potential there for 
defining different levels of access as we continue work on the app. The pre-MetaDB software extracts a lot of data from Folio, um, but not everything. Most notably, ERM or electronic resource management data are not supported. The Folio reporting community have built their own toolbox of reports on top of the platform. It's called Folio Analytics, Folio-Analytics. Uh, it's, a, it's a repository in GitHub under the um, Folio organization in GitHub. And uh, we'll look at that in a few minutes. Um, in comparison, MetaDB is still in development. However, the reporting communities in Folio and Reshare have access to a development environment running MetaDB, and they are um, actively building reports on it. MetaDB extracts virtually all of the data in Folio and Reshare, and the data are updated in near real time using the streaming model uh, that I described earlier. In Folio, members of the reporting community are building ERM reports on MetaDB. I'm thinking of um, recent work by Axel Dürer and uh, Stefan Dombeck. And in Reshare, a reporting group is just beginning to emerge, uh, but they have already created several reports on MetaDB. If you will be using both Folio and Reshare, MetaDB is designed to store the data from both systems so that you can query across, um, across the data sets. And in general, MetaDB is oriented to aggregating and integrating multiple data sources. In MetaDB, um, uh, to contrast with pre-MetaDB, uh, historical data are easier to query, and we are working on improving transformation of JSON data, which are used a lot in Folio and are only transformed uh, partially in, uh, in the current pre-MetaDB software. This is the, the current version of the Query Builder app. Uh, you can try it out in the Folio snapshot reference environment. It's work in progress. Um, it's in development. And we plan to make this available for reshare as well. At the moment, uh, we support single table queries. And there's a small icon in the lower right for exporting results in CSV. The initial engineering work on this was done by uh, Roman Ruiz Esparza at Duke University Libraries. It is now uh, developed by Mike Taylor at Index Data, who has done an incredible amount of work in just the past several weeks um, to ready this for release. Um, so things are happening very quickly with this, uh, with this app. Um, so this, uh, as you can as you can see from the uh, user interface, runs inside Folio, uh, and and will run inside Reshare, and this is a single table query. Um, here's an example of some results. You can also uh, sort the results if you look at in the middle here the order by column, and you can limit the number of results. Uh, and you can order by multiple columns. Uh, and, the, and of course, there's filtering and of both um, rows and columns. Uh, you can configure the default number um, of, of results to show uh, and the maximum and, and to show and the maximum to export. So this is very recent uh, work that's just been done in the past week or so, I think. Uh, and also uh, very recent work, um, you can now uh, select um, uh, tables that you'd like to be able uh, uh, to be available for querying. So the idea is that um, this can be used for querying both the standard table that tables that Folio uh, that um, Folio offers or Reshare offers. Uh, it can also be used to query 
um, some of the uh, derived tables that have been developed by the reporting community on top of those tables. And it can also be used uh, to query local tables that you create in your library. So this is really, this app is really a window onto uh, the LDP database and, um, and, and allows um, the, the work on data transformation and querying to, um, uh, uh, to be um, pushed up to uh, the user interface in Folio. Um, Angela Zoss, also at Duke University Libraries, is the incoming convener of the Folio reporting SIG, taking over from uh, Sharon Beltane, who uh, chaired the SIG for a number of years. Uh, Ms. Zoss has created some very practical LDP-based dashboards using Tableau. Uh, this is a wonderful summary of uh, circulation uh, running over pre-MetaDB. Pre um, and in the LDP project, we really focus on interoperability. So we try not to reinvent the wheel or um, restrict users to a particular um, database tool or a particular uh, visualization tool, but instead try to be compatible with many different tools for querying databases, reporting on them, uh, visualization, and uh, data science tools and languages. Folio has an amazing reporting community, which has provided the LDP project with a tremendous range of requirements, uh, testing, report building, uh, feedback, and, and other contributions. So they have been a wonderful a partner and user community for us. And there are so many people in Folio reporting that have contributed that it's impossible to name them all without forgetting someone. Um, what they have done though, is to build and maintain their own reporting system for Folio as a collection of shared SQL reports and other queries um, that run on top of pre-MetaDB and MetaDB. So this is a, a screenshot of the GitHub repository where they collaborate. Um, this is the Folio Analytics repository I mentioned earlier. I believe they have created around uh, 100 reporting queries uh, covering metadata management, resource management, resource access, and ERM. You can see here uh, that they have at least 15 direct GitHub contributors. And there are others that are less comfortable using GitHub, uh, but they, they contribute indirectly through one of those contributors. Um, this work has been, I think, a really good example of how engaging with these technologies can improve data management skills. Many of these librarians have greatly ramped up their SQL database and GitHub knowledge. Um, and as the community has continued to grow, there is a lot of informal but very effective training and sharing of skills taking place in the course of collaborative work. And of course, that uh, collaboration is happening across libraries, um, and there are so many libraries of all sizes that, um, that have been working together on this. Uh, it's just been um, a really a exciting development to watch and to, to be a part of. And as I mentioned, uh, the ReShare project has begun an effort similar to the one in, in Folio to build uh, reporting queries for ReShare. I think this project may offer some potential opportunities for even more partnership. Uh, at a technical level, we could definitely use more resources, especially people with experience in DevOps or either Folio or ReShare app development. Uh, another area where there might be potential 
is in identifying external data sources that the community would find useful to integrate with Folio and with ReShare data. And, and working together on creating uh, creative ways of funding access to the data and on doing the integration, data integration. We also benefit a lot from engagement with the community um, and, and we would love to have more voices as part of the discussion about uh, open infrastructure and analytics. And I'm sure there are other topics I haven't even considered, so, so please do reach out. I would again like to thank the Open Library Foundation. They have been incredibly supportive of this project and a great pleasure to work with. And uh, our discussions with OLF have already led to some new conversations that might not have happened otherwise. Thank you. Thank you, Nasib. Uh, we have a question. Um, other than access control, does MetaDB have, or is it planning or developing, any facilities to help protect data that are or could be associated with particular library users? For example, regular deletion of certain types of records, removal of identifiers, differential privacy data, etc. Yes. Um, let me go back to this, see if I can find this slide. Um, these gray plugins in the bot at the bottom, um, a, um, I think one of the first things that, that go in these will be uh, folio specific and reshare specific uh, configuration settings for anonymizing personal data as they, uh, as they are streamed into the uh, MetaDB analytic database. Um, we do this now um, in, in pre-MetaDB, but it's more of a hard-coded kind of thing. And um, uh, the, the selection of those, uh, uh, of, of which fields should be anonymized. Um, a lot of the work, sort of early work on that was done by uh, a working group um, in the folio uh, reporting community, uh, uh, Ingolf Kuss and um, uh, Vandana Shah from Cornell and uh, some others who, who uh, did a lot of work on figuring out especially uh, GDPR requirements and um, you know, for, for libraries in particular that are governed by GDPR or that are, are seeking to, to protect um, to, to um, you know, follow voluntarily some of those guidelines. Uh, um, th there's been a lot of work on figuring out which data in Folio should be anonymized because they contain personal data. And so that uh, in, in MetaDB, um, the, we will support um, the same kind of anonymization, but it will be more configurable. It's already a little bit there is a way of configuring it in pre-MetaDB, um, uh, but in these plugins, we'll have uh, very specific um, configurations for Folio and for ReShare. Thank you. Um, next question. Um, did you say that users need to use SQL? Um, there is a concern that not all librarians would want to learn that and uh, maybe are there any plans for an interface that does not require it? Well, that's a that's a very good question. Um, so, um, a lot of the more complex work has to be done in SQL. There's sort of no way around that. Um, but there are but but for simple queries, for simple um, exploration of data, and also in the sense of uh, maybe uh, creating um, sort of um, prefabricated queries or, um, or, or sort of simplified interfaces. Um, there's no requirement to use SQL for those. In addition to that, um, there are many um, uh, both free and commercial 
uh, database tools available that have built into them um, visual query builders. Um, uh, so uh, Tableau has, has that. Um, I think Microsoft Access had one of the first. Um, I'm not sure how well it works today, but um, uh, a very popular database tool in the Folio community and Folio reporting has been uh, a software called dBeaver uh, Community Edition. And that also, the, the, there's a commercial version of that, which, which includes um, a query builder. And of course, the, um, there's also the, the query builder that we're working on now, uh, which does not require SQL. It's really form-based. Um, and we'll be adding um, more, more features to it. But most importantly, we're, we're going to have a join button over here and you're going to be able to query multiple tables uh, in the same, at the same time. And um, that's going to be a, a really interesting um, improvement uh, to this, which will make it, I think, a, a, a very reasonable option for many uh, reporting queries um, um, and something that can be used directly from within Folio without having to install or maintain uh, a separate desktop software or server software. That's great, thank you. Another question. Wow, we're getting lots of questions today. Thank you, everyone. Um, with reporting being of interest to every or nearly every project or library related system, how do you see LDP developing, uh, unfolding in the future? Do you see overlapping SIGs or groups with ReShare um, or other projects? It seems like reporting is an excellent cross-project need and potential community practice. That's a, a, a fascinating question. Um, I think um, I think it, you know the reason I keep bringing up the scientific data use cases is that there's a part of this that uh, really applies um, even outside of libraries. And in fact, the MetaDB software itself is general purpose. It, it doesn't have anything library specific in it. Um, and, and I think that could be a, a, a useful uh, feature which means that um, we could try to get very broad support for the project. Um, and, and that's the, the, the reason that the folio specific uh, configurations and documentation and the reshare specific configurations and documentation plugins uh, are, are separate from MetaDB, uh, but they are within this ecosystem, within the constellation. Um, now, how we actually coordinate that is something um, we've started discussing with the OLF um, because, um, um, you know, having multiple communities already uh, working with this software, um, it, 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 uh, um, there's a lot of benefit to bringing those communities together at the table and figuring out together where the priorities are for those communities. And um, um, I, I think that um, you know, we, we've tried to listen very, very carefully to the Folio community. Um, and, and I think that having more voices now in the conversation is only going to improve the software for everyone. Well, we actually have a really great follow-up question to that. Um, can you talk about how MetaDB can work if we would like to host data from a non-Folio universe data source? Are there APIs available um, or uh, any other way to kind of try to make those things work? That is a great question too. That, that is really what we are working toward. Um, and, and that is uh, one of the main use cases behind a lot of the design decisions um, that, that I've mentioned in this talk. Um, the, uh, so at, at one level, because we're really focusing on the transactional databases in Folio and Reshare to begin with, 
uh, those um, so those databases uh, do not in themselves stream data. Uh, so we make use of the replication system within those within those databases uh, to stream data continuously. And as a result, we can stream data as well from uh, any Postgres database, um, probably any MySQL database. We've done some testing with that, uh, and other databases as well. So that's that's sort of step one. If you have data that's already in a database, um, we may be able to stream it automatically in the same way that we're streaming uh, folio data and reshare data in real time. Um, now, beyond that, there are some systems um, that, um, that we would not be able to stream that way. Uh, and maybe a really good example was that first example, the sensor network. Um, I mean, I could even imagine someday uh, libraries having sensor networks, uh, but even if they don't, it's, it's for purpose of illustration, it's a good example. Um, you know, data are coming in over these sensors and they may not be stored anywhere. They may just go directly, stream directly into MetaDB. So in order to do that, um, the, the, you know, we will be developing an API, but it's, it's really based around Kafka, uh, which is what we're using now as the uh, um, sort of the, the, uh, the streaming API. Um, so, but we'll add to that um, more specific requirements to allow data to come into the system through Kafka. So what that means is that if you have an application that um, we can't stream uh, directly from the database, uh, your application can write data as it becomes available to the Kafka stream. And we can immediately uh, read the data and that's where the, the uh, stream processing um, stream processor of MetaDB um, really comes in. Thank you. Uh, we have another question about uh, the timeline for the switch from pre-MetaDB to MetaDB. So the, the timeline has varied a little bit. Um, we had planned to do, um, to add the mark support in MetaDB, but it turned out that libraries needed it sooner. And um, so we've implemented it for pre-MetaDB. Um, so sometimes our, you know, our develop, development resources um, get, you know, focus on pre-MetaDB um, overall, uh, we're most of the resources are going toward toward MetaDB, um, but it really depends on the on the community. Um, you know, if the community says we really need this, then we try to figure out how to make that work. Um, I mentioned that pre MetaDB has been out for quite a while. It's uh, been used a, a lot in libraries, and it's very stable. And so. Uh, although we are working very hard to uh, get MetaDB out as quickly as possible, we're not going to rush it out. Um, I want to be sure that it also is very stable before it's released. Can you give us any ideas about what else might be coming up in your timeline or uh, future ideas for uh, development? Well, I'm really interested in data integration. Um, I think what we've tried to do here is to try to bring the best tools available for data management uh, to, to libraries. But I think there's a lot more we can do in this pipeline to do um, things like machine learning enabled uh, uh, data integration, data curation. And the other side of that is uh, as I mentioned, thinking about uh, what other data, set, data sets would be useful uh, for, the, uh, for the library community. And can we get together and, and figure out how to, how to integrate those data sets? Because the real value of this kind of platform is going to come from uh, integrating um, data sets that are not current, currently integrated.
Thank you. And I think we've got one last question. Um, how can someone interested in this explore it uh, in a folio snapshot environment if they don't have a local installation but want to learn more about what the data looks like? Thank you, Stephanie, and thank you, um, Aaron, for that for another great question. Um, uh, we have a reference uh, environment um, which is basically hooked up to uh, folio snapshot and I believe uh, folio testing. Uh, and so um, so we have a, a an LDP database that is actually open to the public. Um, if you'll contact me, I can make sure you, you get connected with uh, the access you need to use it and play with it. And the, the data are um, coming over from um, the folio snapshot or folio testing uh, reference environments. So, um, so the idea is that uh, you can make a change in, uh, in the folio reference environments and then see that change reflected in the um, uh, MetaDB and pre-MetaDB reference environments. Um, and that includes now the, uh, the, the query builder. Um, uh, the, the query builder now is in folio snapshot. I think we're working on getting it into uh, into folio testing, um, but that's another way that you can, uh, I mean, this is a way that, that you can actually query uh, a, 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 um, at the moment a pre-MetaDB database uh, directly um, after you've made changes to the, in the folio reference environment. I hope that uh, answered the questions. Great, thank you. And then just one more softball wrap up question for me. Um, for those who are new to the Open Library Foundation and new to the library data platform, what's the best way to volunteer and become involved? But that's, that's a great question that I should have covered in my, in my slides. Um, so there, there are different ways of, of getting involved. Uh, if, you know, if your interest is really um, kind of specific to reporting and folio or reshare, um, for, for folio, um, I would join the reporting SIG meetings, which are Monday mornings, if possible, if you can join them. At the moment, they're Monday mornings at uh, 9 a.m. Uh, Eastern time, or uh, contact um, Angela Zoss, who's the, the new uh, incoming uh, convener. Um, and for uh, ReShare, uh, Kristen Wilson has been putting together um, a, a, a growing group of uh, volunteers who, who are looking at reporting there. If, if you're interested in um, this project sort of beyond those uh, specific um, specific applications, um, then please uh, reach out to me, uh, anyone at Index Data, um, or uh, again, um, either either Angela or Kristen, if that's your uh, you know your best contact. Great. Thank you so much, Naseeb, for joining us today. This has been a great presentation. I certainly know more about LDP now. Um, and thank you for uh, joining us today. Uh, this is our last session of the day. So you can join us again tomorrow at 9.30 a.m. Eastern for setting up the GoKB, an ongoing organizational journey. And please don't hesitate to reach out to myself, anyone on the Open Library Foundation, um, or Beth German, uh, my fellow MC here for the day, um, if you have questions or concerns or need anything else. Um, thank you so much, everyone, and we'll see you tomorrow. <laughs>